Um, thanks to be here. I'm going to have a little retrospective of the last seven years where I developed the GLTF importer exporter in Blender. And my name is Julien Durour, and uh, I'm a pipeline TD, and um, I'm also a freelance for training and for developing um, all three stuff like GLTF consulting or anything else. And before we start, who know what is GLTF? <laughs> okay. So GLTF is a transmission format. It's a file format to um, get 3D data. It's not an authoring format like you can find in USD, for example. It's more the last step 3D format that can be displayed easily in any viewer online or any game engine or in Blender or whatever you want. It's like exactly when you have some Photoshop file format and at the end you export it to PNG or JPEG. It's exactly the same for 3D. And um, the specification, it's an open specification performed by Kronos Group. The Kronos Group, maybe you know the Kronos Group for OpenCL, Colada, Vulkan. And uh, in GLTF file, you can have some scene hierarchy, object and meshes, of course, faces, edges, or point cloud. Uh, you can have some shape keys, you can have some rig and skin, and some camera data, some light data um, with some extension to the official uh, specification, core specification. Um, the material are based on PBR materials. And uh, you can have, of course, have uh, animation, so object transforms and shape keys. And so animation of, of shape keys, uh, of course, rig animation. And uh, via an extension, you are also able to animate anything. <laughs> so, for example, in material, you can animate some factors or some UV transform. So, it's been seven years ago when I started. So, I will have a look of this seven last years and give seven numbers and seven challenges. So, oops, sorry. Um, in uh, 2017, uh, it's the years of the release of the GLTF2 specification. And uh, at the time, I never heard about uh, GLTF yet. Uh, so I did mostly uh, rigging uh, at that time, for example, uh, in De Lili à Paris, a uh, film from uh, Michel Oslo, and uh, some rig, for example, for the Dordogne game um, trailer, uh, only for the trailer. So I, I didn't uh, do the, the rig for the final game. And uh, at that time, uh, I performed some trainings um, and some scripting. And start of uh, 2080, uh, I started working uh, for Airbus as a subcontractor and uh, somewhere in the pipeline, uh, they need uh, a GLTF importer uh, in Blender. So uh, they didn't need, need anything for material for rigging or, or they only need meshes and that's it. So uh, I did the, the first version um, of this uh, GLTF importer um, in maybe two or three days. And after that, um, I decided on my own to continue the development to be able to in, uh, add all the features that Airbus didn't want at that time but uh, that are needed to be uh, compliant with the specification. 
And then, uh, so we are uh, at the start of um, 2018, and uh, I started to, I put it uh, online on GitHub, and I started to say, hey, uh, I did a thing. And uh, one month later, uh, I started, I did uh, uh, material stuff, uh, rigging stuff, and uh, of course it was not uh, feature complete yet. Um, but uh, Don uh, is a guy uh, who worked for uh, Google and part of the Kronos uh, group team of GLTF. At the time, he hey, uh, it's the first implementation of the importer that we can see using uh, the principal BSDF node in Blender. And um, so um, that's how Kronos Group uh, starts communicating uh, with me. And somewhere um, in July or August of um, 2018, um, something happened <laughs> because during all the first half of the year, uh, Kronos um, asked uh, some external company to develop an exporter for GLTF. And I did an importer, and we decided to merge the two, the two add-ons into a single one uh, that will be uh, importer-exporter. And um, Kronos asked me if I was okay to uh, put it uh, on the Kronos Group GitHub. And uh, that's what I did, and we merged during the summer. We merged all the, the stuff uh, between importer and exporter. It was a quite a good period because um, at that time, the official version was uh, not yet the 2.8 version. So uh, the BPI API, the API was very different between the actual official last release and what is currently developed that was the 2.8 version. And um, the policy on Blender is only to manage the last version, but we will be able to uh, manage the official last release. So we in the code have lots of, if the version is 2. Dot something, do something else, do something else. And that was a mess. <laughs> Of course. And at that time, SketchUp uh, start to uh, fork um, the, the add-on. And um, you may don't know that, but uh, um, SketchUp has a, an add-on where you can directly uh, scroll the, the thing in the website and say, OK, I want to import that. And you can import directly uh, in, um, in Blender. So this add-on is a fork of the official Kronos uh, importer, exporter add-on. So um, they make some PR to fix some bugs and some stuff like inverse bind matrix that I didn't implement it yet, for example. And uh, so it was a, a real help to, to get uh, some, some feedback and uh, some help from Sketchfab uh, team. And somewhere uh, in the start, no, 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 it's November uh, 2018, um, I talked after the Blender conference to the Blender team, and we decided to put this add-on officially uh, shipped with Blender. So here's uh, the first commit at the end of November. Uh, and uh, then just after the add-on was set as an official add-on, so shipped by default and enabled by default in Blender. It was quite funny because at that time, the 2.8 version was not released yet. So we still have the mess with uh, if version is uh, under 2.8, do something. and. Uh, else, do something else. But it's not in the policy of the add-on for official <laughs> Blender repository. So I did a script that read the add-on script 
and delete all that based on the old version and change the indentation <laughs> to make it work uh, only for 2.8 version in the official repository. And then somewhere um, in the start of uh, 2019, um, I planned to give a talk for in a conference uh, where I said, okay, importing GLT stuff is quite fun, but uh, what about uh, exporting? And I want to make a presentation about exporting a GLTF file and importing into Godot, for example. And um, at that time, uh, the company who, who uh, developed the exporter part was uh, not uh, maintaining the exporter part of the add-on anymore. And uh, I discovered that it was not ready for production, not at all. And uh, probably um, the people who develop uh, the exporter parts um, did a great job for uh, mesh and shape keys and something like that. But for animation or for rigging, uh, probably they are not riggers or animators themselves. So there is a lot of, it's not corner case, it's really large part <laughs> of the pipeline that didn't work. So that's how I started to develop uh, the, and to maintain the exporter part of the add-on too. And uh, at that time, um, Godot team start to um, contact me to say, oh, we have lots of bugs uh, from files that are coming from Blender. And uh, we have some bug reports about uh, importing GLTF file, but uh, yeah, there is some things that are not okay. So we started discuting and um, to discuss and um, yeah, to to be sure that we are aligned and uh, everything is smooth between uh, exporting file from Blender and importing uh, into Godot. And then the 2020 <laughs> year with uh, the, uh, the COVID time. And um, at that time, it was quite a difficult period for me because um, a lot of people uh, online are uh, alone at home and uh, have time to develop some open source, open source projects. But I have three children. <laughs> And uh, this picture uh, are quite recent, but uh, they was four years smaller than in this picture at the time. So it take me so much time to have them uh, at home and do school at home. And um, so it was quite a difficult year for me uh, to keep motivation to work on it. But um, yeah, I managed to, to do it. And um, at the time, uh, the Kronos group said, oh, maybe it can be uh, good to continue discussion more deeply. And if you're part of the Kronos group, it can help. So how, how we can manage that? And that's a perfect timing because that's uh, done uh, in uh, October. Um, decided that Blend Foundation uh, is now part of the Kronos Group Consortium. So um, it was more easy for me to, um, to be part of uh, any Kronos Group discussion um, because yeah, I'm coming as a Blender team label for the Kronos Group. And in 2021, it was quite funny to discover that uh, it was that time for where uh, the NASA um, decided to put some rover on Mars. And uh, they put some files um, online and uh, just discovered reading the file that it was a GLTF file and the GLTF file was exported from my exporter. <laughs> So it, it was quite funny to, to discover that. So of course I tried to import it again and uh, it works quite well. And then in uh, 2022, um, maybe you, you know the Autorig Pro uh, add-on. 
uh, is quite popular. It's a paid add-on, and uh, the developer contacted me and said, okay, there's a lot of people that uh, asking me to be able to export uh, to, uh, to GLTF file, and uh, I've got some issue because I'm performing a temporary rig that uh, blah, 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 so it's quite, you know, don't enter into technical details, but uh, yeah, I, I work with uh, the guys who perform this add-on to, to be sure that uh, with one click button, uh, you can now export your AutoRig Pro in GLTF uh, file format. And then, um, some, mostly some startup uh, started to contact me to say, oh, okay, we are quite interested to implement some GLTF stuff into my our pipeline. Uh, so I started uh, as a freelance to have some consulting time to um, yeah, help some companies to, to know how exactly how GLTF uh, works and uh, how they can include it uh, in their pipeline. And then, uh, Godot Engine again, uh, somewhere at the beginning of uh, 2022, uh, there, is, there was a new version and they say, okay, you can now drag and drop blend file directly in Godot and uh, you will get your send. Okay, disclaimer, it's not as simple as that. Um, what they uh, really do, because it's still the, the case, um, they only uh, launch a background uh, blender and uh, open the scene and export it to GLTF with uh, my add-on and then you get the GLTF file into Godot that uh, is read uh, by Godot. So it was quite a funny time because um, the first version used some option at exports uh, that the user in Godot cannot change and uh, it can lead some weird stuff. But uh, no, I think it's the case for now that uh, yeah, you, all the preferences, all the options in the Blender exports, uh, you can choose them uh, in Godot too. And then start the last two years that was quite busy for me because uh, Kronos contact me and say, okay, we have a lot of uh, officially ratified extensions that we want to include uh, in um, GLTF importer exporter. And uh, do you want to implement them? I say, yes, but first, uh, I'm currently working on the refactoring of the same graph traversal because no, we have some collection, a nested collection, and when I started, when I started to maintain the exporter part, and when uh, other guys started to implement the exporter, it was not two dot eight, so there was not collection, no collections, and so we have to to refactor all this stuff to be sure that the collection are handled correctly, and. Uh, so I say, yeah, I, I want to implement your extension, but first uh, I, I would like to finish that. And they say, okay, no problem. And you can work on the same graph refactoring and the animation baking to be sure that animation are handled correctly at export. And then Blender 3.3, it was the time to uh, implement all this extension um, that is mostly extensions that extend the minimal PBR material that you can export with GLTF and uh, with all the extension uh, you can now have IOR, Sheen, Specular, Transmission like you can see in principle BSDF uh, nodes in Blender. Blender 3.4 uh, with geometry nodes started to be a real thing. Um, 
it was time to implement some custom attributes import export because in GLTF file you can have some custom attributes too. Uh, so it was uh, the first uh, version where you can um, import and export some custom attributes into GLTF file. And then uh, start of 2023, um, um, Kronos Group asked me to be more active for bug triaging, and they asked me to perform that uh, in name of Kronos Group. So uh, I started to to handle all the the stuff that we can see on GitHub, <laughs> and we'll we'll have a number about that later. Blender 3.5 and um, no major improvements uh, in this uh, version, but lots of small improvements uh, at any corner case of, and of course, a lot of bug fixing. And then um, Blender 3.6 uh, LTS version, uh, I perform an animation refactoring because animation code was a mess and uh, yeah, I, need to have a clear and new version of animation exports to be sure to handle all corner case bugs. Lot of uh, new thing in the 4.0 version and um, to only name three of them. Um, that in that version that the new principal BSDF node was uh, shipped. Uh, in Blender, and fortunately, um, this new version uh, was more aligned with uh, the shading uh, algorithm that is used in GLTF files. So, um, before that, um, we have some perform some conversions, sometimes looseless, sometimes not, uh, to be sure that we can uh, export and, ex and uh, import uh, materials correctly. And uh, with this new principal BSDF nodes in Blender, um, we are no more aligned and uh, we don't have any more some uh, loss of data when we import and export. And uh, yeah, I also implement some uh, mesh GPU and sensing extension and uh, WebP export. For that one version, um, I implement the material anisotropy uh, extension um, uh, and some experimental export of geometry nodes. And uh, yeah, you can see here a, a post from Passive Star uh, that was quite happy to be able to export uh, this kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, it's quite experimental yet because quite difficult to handle all corner case in geometry nodes, but uh, yeah, it works. For the two, and um, some new thing too in this version, uh, some color vertex color management. I will talk about that just a little later. And um, there is a new collection export that is a feature in Blender where you can uh, put some exporter uh, only on some collections. So uh, we have to tweak something to be sure that uh, it's handled correctly um, for my exporter. And um, my add-on has a new home uh, on Blender repository because uh, it's a release where uh, extensions uh, replace uh, add-ons. And um, my um, add-on and GLTF importer exporter uh, is not an extension. Is an add-on core, so it's directly no, uh, included in the main repository of Blender. And in that version, I also implement uh, animation pointer extension uh, that uh, um, now with this extension, you are able to uh, uh, animate uh, things like uh, light color, uh, bass color, 
uh, any factor on any extension or any value on the PBR uh, nodes, um, something like that. And for uh, 4.3 version that is not released yet, still in beta, uh, it's mostly stabilization. There will be no big new feature in that version. Uh, because, uh, as you can see, the last two versions was the last two years uh, was quite. Uh, um, there was lots of new uh, features, so yeah, I need to calm down and be sure that everything uh, is stable enough. And for the future, something that uh, will keep me quite busy. Uh, if you was uh, here um, one hour ago, you. <laughs> Uh, know that uh, the Blender animation uh, will change uh, a lot because uh, we will now uh, have some slotted animation where you will be able um, to uh, have multiple data block, different data block uh, animated in the same action and for example multiple different objects that are shipped into a single action and that's not the case for the moment in Blender. So, um, fortun yeah. <laughs> uh, fortunately, it is the data model that is used uh, in GLTF file format. So, um, it will simplify all the stuff in the importer exporter. But, of course, yeah, there is a lot of work to perform to be able to manage it correctly. Uh, so yeah, that's what what will be keep me busy for the next version that is 4.4 and not the 5.0 but the 4.5 version. So that is for the little retrospective and now some numbers from the the repository. Uh, so it's number from uh, January. Um, 2023 to last week, and uh, I handle uh, more than uh, 450 uh, tickets, uh, mostly are reported directly in the GitHub uh, repository of Kronos Group, but yeah, something like 15% uh, are reported directly in Blender uh, Tracker. It seems that the exporter is more used than uh, the importer, or maybe is more um, stable, um, or maybe it's more simple to work on the importer part than uh, in the exporter part. For these uh, tickets, uh, one third are really bugs, and the other part are feature requests, um, support, uh, support because people don't know very well how GLTF works or don't know very well how Blender works, and something like 6% uh, yeah, it's bug reports without uh, any test case or without any answer. And most of them are new new tickets and 15% uh, are uh, duplicate tickets or something that uh, is reported and uh, already fixed in main uh, branch and uh, will be shipped with the next, uh, the next release of Blender. And um, most of the tickets are about uh, animation uh, 23% and uh, what is not shown here is that uh, for 2023 it was more like one third of the tickets and uh, it's slowed down now so all the work I performed refactoring the code was quite uh, useful because now we have less and less uh, tickets about uh, animation and um, 
most of them know are about uh, the mesh stuff. It can be custom attributes, it can be normal, it can be everything linked to the 3D model itself. And one good part is still about material and texture. So I have to find uh, seven numbers or some numbers uh, based on the, <laughs> the GitHub repository. Um, you, you can see that um, yeah, we have lots of fork and stuff. And we are more than uh, 5,000 commits only for this add-on. So seven challenges. There's a lot of uh, challenges. The first one, it's a Dunning-Kruger effect. Okay, I started developing the add-on. Oh, it's quite easy. Yeah, you know, you put some vertex and some faces and yeah, it will be easy. Uh, animation, it's not complicated. Yeah, 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 let's go. So of course, <laughs> the more and more uh, I work on it, the more I know that I know nothing <laughs> about 3D. Um, yeah, just for information, this stuff about the Dunning-Kruger effect is not really scientists proof stuff, but this is the official uh, value that uh, was performed by the two guys, Dunning-Kruger. One more challenge is about animation because Blender and GLTF are not using the same data model. For example, you cannot handle this stuff in GLTF because you cannot uh, animate only one component of the location, for example. You have to perform animation uh, on the three components at the same time. And uh, you cannot have multiple uh, interpolation in the same channel. For example, here there is a one the constant, one linear, and one basic curve that cannot be handled in GLTF files. That why we are baking lots of stuff. Uh, rigging, there is a lot of... <laughs> yeah. Okay, a lot of stuff that needs to be done and baked because, yeah, if the, it's a well done rig, you have some animated bones that are not the deformation bones. So animation bones are not animated. So you have to back sync and uh, when you want to export, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of things, but uh, it start to become quite stable, except that there is no bendy bones, <laughs> bendy bones uh, on GLTF. And yeah, all the NLS stuff too, um, because we want to be able to animate different objects in the same animation in GLTF. We have to have a trick uh, based on the name of the track in the NLA to be sure that the name action will be merged at export. And yeah, that's something hopefully that will change with the slotted action. And rigging parts was quite challenge, uh, challenging too, because we have bones and Blender is the only software that have bone <laughs> and not joints. So, yes, there is a lot of discussion about that uh, in the, the tracker because uh, sometimes we want to have the best display for uh, rigging when we you import some rig uh, GLTF file in Blender. Um, but when you export it, yeah, we change the orientation of the bone to be sure that it displays the best way. But we, when you export, of course, uh, the joint orientation change and uh, yeah, some people just want to edit GLTF file without any change in the joint orientation. Uh, so there is lots of discussion about that and um, a lot of things uh, about how to display to be sure that uh, it can handle any pipeline. And then for skinning, for example, um, 
you can have some vertices that are not assigned to any bone in Blender, but it's not the case in GLTF, for example. So we have to manage it by creating a fake not wall bone to be sure that we assign all the not assigned in Blender uh, vertices into that bone and something like that. So, uh, lots of color case that make me buzzy for lots of time. <laughs> The shader modes, um, yeah, of course, we want to have a shader look the same in uh, Blender and in your game engine or online viewer. And of course, it's not the case because 90% of the nodes in Blender are not part of the specification. So you cannot, for example, have a color ramp or something like that. So I think in this picture, that is part of the Blender documentation. There are all nodes that are managed in GLTF exports. If you have a complete PBR node with all the extension, it will look something like that. And then the color management. Um, we perform a modification somewhere in Blender 4.1, if I remember correctly. Um, because in the GLTF specification, um, the vertex color is mandatory, a multiplier of the base color. So we perform a change to be sure that it's the case when you want to export from Blender to be sure that if you really want the vertex color looks like exactly you have in Blender, um, we check that we have some vertex color or multiplier in the, somewhere in the node tree. But um, it seems that Blender doesn't handle vertex color like that because you can have a vertex color active and nothing in the node tree and you will not see your Blender, you will not see uh, your vertex color in uh, the shader in any render, but when you export uh, before the 4.1 version, you, you have this multiplier on the base color. So some people said, yeah, yeah I don't understand why I have some this color uh, because I didn't see it in Blender. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's because you, you have some vertex color active and in GLTF it's mandatory that it's a multiplier of the base color, blah, 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 blah. And there is some common usage uh, that say, okay, um, f mostly for game engine, we want to have some custom specific data that we want to handle in the GLTF file to be sure to read it uh, in the game engine and something like that. But that was not how GLTF manage it because there are some custom attributes in GLTF file and in Blender that is used for exactly this uh, this feature to be able to to export some specific data. So um, I had some bad time <laughs> in the tracker where when people see that uh, it's not working anymore in their pipeline, they start to complain and we have this great command. This is a dumbest commit in the history of the game development industry. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it was some yeah, quite bad time to explain that the common usage, the Blender usage and the GLTF usage are not aligned and we cannot perform whatever you want. But we discussed with the guys at Kronos and uh, we had an option back to be able to export vertex color, uh, even if it's not used in the node tree with a big warning that says, uh, maybe your data will not show correctly in any render because it's not 100% aligned with the specification or something like that. Another challenge is to be shipped with Blender and uh, it can be quite challenging because 
I need to follow the calendar of Blender release. And sometimes um, I miss some information, some change in the BPI uh, API or some, some changes. Um, and yeah, if there are some changing I'm not aware of, uh, I'm not able to align the exporter and the exporter uh, uh, to be sure that everything will keep important exports mostly. And maybe the next big challenge for me, here is a list of all the options you have when you want to export GLT file. There is a lot of. And um, I'm not sure how we need to handle that because people want to export using their own pipeline. So people want one thing, people want another thing. So uh, we put uh, one more option and one more on one more and um, we have lots of stuff. So maybe one day we have to, uh, to refactor it and maybe have a, yeah, default beginner export mode and uh, one expert mode where you can see all this stuff. And to not finish with some difficulties here, yeah. I also have some love from <laughs> from network where people say, "Okay, yeah, we love uh, we love what you you are performing," and um, yeah, it's always a good time to receive some good feedback because that's one part of the frustration that I'm shipped with Blender, but I have no link directly with all the people that are using um, my, my add-on, my work. Um, and yeah, of course, like every developer you heard from users where they are bug, <laughs> but not when everything works correctly. But sometimes, yes. And that's it. Uh, if you have some question, I can answer here. If we have time, yes, you have five minutes. And later on any network, and of course, here during the conference. Thanks. Yes. How's the performance on really large files? And have you ever been tempted to write it in C++ inside of Blender? Yeah, we have a lot of, yeah, <laughs> lot of performance issue for large file. Um, for the animation, for example, uh, we have to mostly bake everything. So we have to assign an action and then evaluate each frame and then go back to the next action and evaluate each frame and can be quite long. And we have, yeah, of course, some other performance uh, issue. Um, mostly because we are trying to, uh, we, we have some issue uh, with the uh, not tree traversal because uh, when you, in the BPI, when you are on the node and you want the link that are uh, linked to the nodes, it will go through all the link of the node tree and not only on the link uh, of the, this particular node. So it's going to be quite long. So maybe in the next version, we will back all this to be sure that uh, we not go every link uh, thousands of times. And uh, we have also performance with large file because we want to be sure to have the minimum file size. So uh, we checking if this for animation, for example, if the timestamp is not already used somewhere else in the file. So we checking lots of dictionaries, comparisons that can are quite long in Python. Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, the question is about uh, um, interaction. Um, yes and no. <laughs> uh, currently, um, the interactive uh, extension is not officially ratified by Kronos Group. 
So uh, with Kronos Group and Blender, we want to be sure that what is import and export from uh, Blender is the official specification and officially ratified extension to be sure that the common usage won't become the specification itself. It was the case uh, with Colada that have lots of things that are not part of the specification, but because uh, they are used in lots of uh, software, it becomes the specification itself because it's commonly used. And uh, we want that with the GLTF5 format. So uh, I won't implement anything that is not part of the specification or officially ratified extension. And interaction is not yet ratified for now. And um, so I didn't check to start how we can handle that. Probably there is a lot of nodes in geometry nodes that can fit the specification, but um, yeah, didn't start to go deeply into that yet. But maybe one day. <laughs> yes? Thanks. So uh, I would like to ask, did uh, you learn or are there implement any like, communication with the game development community from the Vertex Paint debacle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I work, uh, yeah. Yeah, of course, uh, I learned a, a lot. First thing I love, I, I learned is to switch off my computer <laughs> for the weekend. <laughs> And to be sure to not have a look on this ticket. <laughs> because, yeah, lots of bad things happen on these tickets. But uh, I understand why people are, are complaining. But, yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, that part of the difficulty of my work uh, is that GLTF is a file format transfer, so we have to handle with Blender, of course, with Kronos Group, and with any other software that want to import or export GLTF file and interact with Blender. So there is not a central place where I can get some feedback, so except the GitHub. Yeah, the GitHub of the Kronos Group is the main place to ask some new feature and bug reports because sometimes I receive emails on my personal address or on my professional address too. And uh, sometimes on Twitter, X now, uh, I also receive some bug reports on that. And uh, okay, maybe I can answer uh, on the fly, but maybe one day later I will forget about it. So yeah, it's quite challenging for any developer that love to talk to their computer, but not to people <laughs> to handle the, that stuff. But, yeah. Welcome. Yes. External references. Yeah. There are some discussion on Kronos group to work on, yeah, on that. But currently, yeah, it's under discussion. Yeah, sure. What this plan is like you can perform in Blender is have a, a main file and referencing some stuff in another file. Uh, it's already the case uh, for yeah for buffer and for uh, for texture, for example. But uh, we want to enhance that and to be uh, able to have, uh, for example, okay, we have a, a, a root node with uh, three children and these children, it's this file and go it. And uh, yeah, it, it will be a thing one day, <laughs> not in short term, but yeah, probably it will be something one day. Yes? Yeah. G 
Gita. Kronos Group, GLTF, Blender, IO. And I think if you open Blender and you go to the add-on GLTF file format and report a bug and you will go directly to this repository. <laughs> And of course, if you report it directly on Blender issue tracker, some triaging team will poke me. <laughs> Any other question? Yes? Are there ways for a uh, Blender uh, plugin to just kind of interact with the GLTF exporter, like pre process or post process some of the data? Yes, in GLTF uh, importer exporter, we have a hook system where somewhere in the code you can change the data. It's not perfect, there is no hook for everything, you can break everything using it, but when you know what you are doing, you can use it. Yeah, You have yeah, some explanation somewhere here, uh, add an example, uh, yeah, extension, yeah, how to use it, uh, where you, what class you have to define and how to use it and uh, what the list of the current uh, hooks that you can use. And of course there is much more to perform in this area, but uh, yeah, this is not my main project. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, so uh, I perform with the time I, I have to, to work on it, but uh, yeah. Any other question? No? Thanks a lot.